Hi there again, and thanks for joining me here at Preaching the Gospel That Saves, the station that is dedicated to Paul's My Gospel, the gospel that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to judge all creation today in the dispensation of the grace of God. The gospel of the grace of God, Paul's My Gospel, is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. In verse 1 it says it's the gospel. In verse 2 it says it's how ye are saved. Ye, by the way, is plural. Okay, ye is plural. It, it's, it has that Y, and that Y, just picture yourself holding up two hands up in the air, just like that song YMCA. Plural, two hands up in the air, Y, ye is plural. So, so it's for all to be saved, okay, it's plural, that Christ died for our sins, that's verse 3, and verse 4, that he was buried and rose again on the third day, okay? That is the gospel that saves us today in the dispensation of the grace of God. We are King James Bible believers on this station. We believe biblical Christianity. We believe that God gave us his King James Bible, his perfectly preserved word, in the English language, as it is, without error. If you believe in any other translation, you don't have a Bible. That's what this station believes. The NIV, for example, the NIV, the New International Version, has so many verses that they had put into that Bible that aren't in any Greek manuscript to be found on the face of the planet. That one is unbelievable. A lot of the verses just came right out of New Jersey. The men who put it together in New Jersey just kind of came up with things and stuck them in the New International Version, and they called it a Bible translation. And like I had just told you, a lot of the verses, a lot of the context of that translation is nowhere to even be found if you're going to go back and look in the Greek, which, again, this station always takes the King James and compares it to the Greek. We never take the Greek and compare it to the King James because the King James is God's perfectly preserved word. But if you're one of those people that are going back to the Greek, take the New International Version and compare it to the Greek, you're going to find that most of the verses in that translation are nowhere to be found. Anyway, we're going to do something fun today in this message. Um, we're just going to talk about what we are not as Christians. And I just kind of made up this list. You can wrap your brain around it. But what we are not as Christians, we are not New Testament. We are not sheep. We are not disciples. Okay, so going back to the first one, we are not New Testament. Jeremiah chapter 31, Hebrews chapter 8, and Ezekiel 36 confirm that. We are not sheep. 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 21 confirms that. And I'm just going to give you the verses. I want you to look them up and see for yourself the difference between, again, prophecy and mystery between Israel and the church, the body of Christ. We are not disciples. Again, 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 21 confirms that. We are not born again. Again, 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 21 confirms that. We are not Israel. Ephesians chapter 1, 22 and 23. We are not members of a building or organization. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 19, Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. We are not counselors, Isaiah 9, 6. We are not advocates, 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. And by the way, the word advocate in the New American Standard Version translation, I'm not going to call that thing a Bible either, but in the New American Standard Version translation, the word advocate 
was added three more times. Okay, The word advocate in the King James Bible is only found once, and that's in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. The word advocate in the New American Standard Bible, translation, I'm sorry, I just said Bible and that's wrong. The word advocate replaced the word reward. The word advocate replaced the word condemned. And the word advocate replaced um, one more word, and I, oh, um, record. So, it replaced reward, record, and condemned. They replaced it with the word advocate. Uh, we are not priests, Matthew 23, verse 9. We are not shepherds. 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 21 confirms that. We are not laymen. That term is not even in the King James Bible, which means it's not even biblical. Okay. We are not spiritual leaders. Again, that is not in the Bible, not in the King James Bible. We are not small group leaders. Again, not in the Bible. These titles do not exist in the King James Bible in God's perfectly preserved word. They're made up. We are not flock leaders. Again, another biblical term that they say is biblical, but nowhere to be found in the King James authorized version. We are not Baptists. That's not biblical. We are not Catholics. That's not biblical. We are not evangelicals. Again, not biblical. Okay, so those are titles that man just kind of threw out there and Again, because man has most most churches, not all, most churches don't have a final authority, which is the King James Bible. What they do is, is they take other translations and they find the verses that fit their need. And basically, I, I mean, they're taking verses that aren't even Bibles that fit their need. And any translation that fits their need, any translation that makes them feel good, um, ultimately that causes them to be the final authority. Like I said, they, had no fi they have no final authority. Um, those people typically go to the scholars first, not their Bible. They typically go to the commentaries first, not their Bible. They typically go to their pastor or priest, not their Bible. They typically go to their small group leader, not their Bible. They typically go to, you know, maybe somebody online that agrees with them, not their Bible, and so on and so forth. Um, we are not perfect. We are not Lutheran. That's not biblical either. I can't find that anywhere in my Bible. We are not building a kingdom. What does Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 say? We are not going to inherit the earth. This is a good one. We are not servants. Galatians chapter 4 verse 7, Romans chapter 8 verse 14 confirms that. So, hopefully you have fun with those. I'm going to continue with these. Um, that's just a small, that's just part of the list. There's many more things. Um, when you come to understand how to rightly divide your Bible, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, says to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, so 2 Timothy 2.15 is how we are to study our Bible. That's how God tells us to do it in His perfectly preserved Word. So, if we're rightly dividing, that means we are rightly dividing what God said to Israel and what God's doing with Israel to what God said to the church, the body of Christ, to what God's doing with the church, the body of Christ. And so when, you, when you're looking these up, remember, we can't mix law and grace. That's what Galatians 2 21 says, Romans chapter 11, verse 6 says. So, keep them separate. Study these out that I just threw at you. 
and hopefully you'll see a distinction. Hopefully you'll see the two separate programs that are going on in your Bible. And they're going on, in Acts, they were going on simultaneously. They were going on at the same time. But now, and that's exactly where we're at, we're in the but now, and, that, and Ephesians confirms that. We're not in time past. We're not in ages to come. We are in the but now which is the mystery, which is the dispensation of the grace of God. And just read Ephesians, talks about, you know, time past, the but now, and ages to come. It talks about the dispensation of the grace of God. It talks about the mystery um, in Ephesians chapter 3. That is where we are today. So when you're reading these things that I just threw out at you, keep those two programs separate, and you will be able to, that will help you, to see who you are in Christ and to see what God is doing today and to help you be more stabilized in your position as a member of the church, the body of Christ. Thanks again for listening. And again, study, if you have a bunch of different translations, you know, the these and the thous and the yees and the yous. Remember, thee and thou is always singular and ye and you is always plural when you're studying your King James Bible. Thanks again for listening. Email me at buttonnowministry at gmail.com and subscribe to my channel. And tell others about this channel. If you are still uncertain, and hopefully you're not, about the gospel of the grace of God, the gospel that saves us today, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that it's the gospel, verse 1, Verse 2, it's how you're saved. Verse 3, that Christ died for your sin. Verse 4, that he was buried and rose again on the third day. Tell somebody else to listen to this channel so that they can have the opportunity to believe in the gospel, the grace of God, the only power unto salvation today in the dispensation of the grace of God. Thanks again for listening. And um, again, subscribe to my channel.